In this video, we're going to be talking about colors and how to be more familiar with creating color swatches and our color panels in Adobe Illustrator. So we can be selecting our fill or stroke color from multiple places. For instance, we've got square like this one in here. And we can be choosing its color from here or from our toolbar in that area or even from our color panel. And we can be even showing more options from here to customize our color from our RGB values for red, green, blue. For instance, we can be reducing our green values and our color will be changed like that. And if you're working on a print file or CMYK, you can be changing options also from here for CMYK or WebSafe or HSP. But we've got that document opened in RGB mode. And of course, if you want to change your document's color mode anytime, you can go to file and you will find color mode in here. You can be switching to CMYK or RGB anytime. And also the other way to change our colors from our swatches panel in here, which is so essential panel and so handy as well. So we can be choosing from any of these colors to color our items, or even we can be choosing from all these amazing swatch libraries in here. We've got art history, celebration, food, gradients, and all these amazing panels. So for instance, I'm gonna go to art history. I'm gonna be choosing Bob art. And you will be having these swatches to choose from. And we can be adding that one to our panel in here for a quick access. So we've got our swatches in here. And if we wanna switch between them, we can be choosing that one. And anytime you wanna remove it from here as well, you can be taking this one off and then you can close it. So back to our swatches panel in here, and you can be editing more options for our panel from here for either new swatch or new color group. And we're gonna be talking about that right now, or even select all unused colors within our artboard, or even add selected colors or sort by name or kind, or even you can be changing our thumbnail size from medium to large or even small and so on. And we can be accessing our libraries from here as well. And if we did any customization to our swatch, we can be saving that as ASE or AI. And we're going to be talking about that also in a minute. Okay. And we can be showing them as list view in here. And that one will be giving us our color component, as you can see, for red, green, and blue values. Or our thumbnail for quick access of our colors next to each other's. So let's start by adding a color to our swatches panel. So for instance, we've got that color customized a minute ago and we need to add that one to our swatch. We can be selecting our object with our desired fill color and then we will be hitting that new swatch button. And here we can add a name to our swatch or even color type, either it's process color or spot color. And the difference between them is mainly that process color is generated by mixing the CMYK colors, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, black colors, the famous ink colors that are used for printing offset printings. And if we switch our color mode to CMYK, we will see that in a better way. Now we've got cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and most of the printing colors can be generating from mixing these colors. So if we need a pure cyan color, we can set that value to zero and make that one 100. And you will be having a pure cyan color and same goes for magenta and so on. However, if we start mixing that with 50% magenta and we will be having that color. And if we add maybe 100 yellow, we will be getting a new green color and so on. We can make that green even darker by adding some black values from here or make it brighter from here as well. So not all colors can be generated from mixing cyan and magenta and yellow and black. Some colors can be found by mixing other colors of inks like silver, for instance, or gold color or some neon colors and so on. And these colors are called spot colors in here. And they are usually quite expensive in printing them than the CMYK because we have to purchase that spot color or special color. Some printing house calls that special color, but they are also essential to print some nice colors like silver color or even for branding purpose or for backing design, keeping your branding consistent and maintaining your visual corporate identity. 
So we're gonna keep that color as a process color. Notice we changed that color values and we can be customizing the color mode for that color, either RGB, grayscale, CMYK, and so on. And we can be switching that color from global to a normal color. And global means that if we got that color added to our swatches and anytime we customize our color in here, it will be customized also in our artboard. We're gonna be seeing that in action right now. And also we can be adding that color to our library, which could be very important to share your design elements and colors with other Creative Cloud users. If you are cooperating on some design project, or even if you want to use that color again, maybe in Adobe Photoshop or in Design or After Effects or any other Adobe application, you can be adding that color in here and also you can be choosing where to add it if you've got more than one or even create a new one from here as well. So once you're done with that, you're gonna press OK and you will be having your color added in your swatches in here and you will notice that little triangle which means that this color is global color and global color means if we've got that one in that color and maybe another element within our artboard like this one in the same color and we need to quickly change these colors within our design we can be we can be using the global color feature which could be very helpful if you want to quickly edit your design so I'm gonna get that values to maybe orange and that one maybe a color like that that one and now we've got our color value changed and if we select our preview button in here you will see that these design elements got instantly changed and if we press ok they will be changed with our color however if we select only that object and leaving that square and double click our color and turn off global feature in here and open our preview options and start changing our color we're gonna be seeing that our square is not changing because we've got the global feature off and only that object will be affected because we've got that one selected already. So we're gonna be pressing OK. Now if you pay a close attention to our swatches panel, you're gonna be seeing some swatches in here and some folders like these folders, one for grays and two color palettes, which are called color groups. And using these color groups could be a great way to organize your color palettes and maybe putting some harmonies together, some contrast colors together, some gray scales together like these grays in here. So we can be adding any of these colors by selecting a color and added to our folder and it will be added to that color group for instance or even selecting some colors by holding the command or control key and clicking some colors that you might like maybe these three colors and you will be clicking on that button in here new color group and you can call it any name you would like and you will be seeing that these colors added to your color group in here and that black color was already selected so it moved with them so I'm gonna be deleting that black color because I don't want it in my color group in here hitting that button in here and yes and once you've got that one selected you will be seeing that option highlighted edit color group or even double clicking in here to edit colors and we will be seeing these three colors on our color wheel and we can be choosing from our colors to change their values in here so we can be selecting our brown color or maybe that one and so on and also you can be changing that color by dragging your color on your color wheel and you will be having different color options as you can see of course you can be showing a smooth color wheel instead of segmented one like that and you can be going more freely in here as you can see or even switch to color bars and then clicking on that little icon in here will be showing you more options to choose from maybe that dark color or that bright one so I'm gonna keep the dark one looks better on that palette and if we switch back to our segmented color wheel for instance you will notice that these colors were linked together and we can be unlinking them from here as well so we can be unlinking our colors and you will be seeing these dashed lines which means that each color can be changed separately from here so I'm gonna be dragging that color while the other two colors will not be affected and if we need to add a color we can be selecting that tool add color tool and click anywhere maybe that orange 
and we will be having that color or even if we want to remove any color we can be selecting that one and we can be removing that again and we can be adjusting our brightness from here as well for our color wheel or even show brightness and hue on our wheel or even saturation and hue as it is now so when you switch it's going to be looking like that showing the brightness and hue of each color however this one will be focusing more on color saturation and once you're done with that you can be pressing ok and it will be asking you to save these changes to your new color group and you're going to be pressing yes and you will be having your colors customized and also from that option we can be adding that color group to our library in here or even if we've got a selected swatch we can be adding that one by clicking that button and it will be added in here to our library see we've got that one added just right now along with these other colors and that button in here will be opening the color themes panel which if you click you will be seeing your color themes panel I've got that one docked in here you can be opening that one also from window color themes and that theme basically is a link between your Adobe Illustrator and Adobe's color website which is amazing website by the way for choosing colors or even color palettes and let's go quickly and check that website in here so if you go to color.adobe.com or even type color adobe in google you will be seeing that website first thing in the results and you will need to sign in with your creative cloud id in that website to get that link between that website and your adobe programs you're going to be seeing that color wheel in here which is controlling all these colors in here and if we start dragging that color maybe like that you will be seeing these values are affected so if we go all the way to the greens you will be seeing that all these colors got changed or even you can be dragging one of these colors or even you can be customizing each of these colors separately in here let me scroll a little bit down we have got the rgb values in here now we are controlling the red values and here we've got the green values that one is changing and so on and you can be changing your color rule from here maybe to shade or even custom color rule if you would like or even you can be creating your color palette from an image by clicking that button or even going to explore for a ready-made palettes for you and you will be seeing all these amazing color palettes you can be choosing from most popular in here most used random and all these options and scrolling all the way to down you will be seeing more options so let's say we like this one in here we can be hovering over that one and clicking on save and it will be saved to our adobe illustrator so if i click in here and then i go to adobe illustrator and then select my themes it will be existing in here and i can be adding that two swatches from here or view online or even edit this one from here as well so I'm going to be adding that one to swatches and it will be added into a new color group as you can see. So one more thing to mention in here, if we have our design made and we like these colors for instance and we need to create our swatch library from these nice colors, we're going to be pressing command or control A or selecting everything and then we're going to be clicking on new color group in here and we can be creating our new color group from selected swatches or selected artwork we're going to leave it on selected artwork and also we can be converting all process colors to global in that option and also include swatches for tints and we're going to be pressing ok and you will be having all these colors added into that color group in here so now we need to save our swatches so we're going to be going to that hamburger menu in here and we have two saving options one as ase and the other as ai and ase will be giving you a swatch that is compatible with all adobe other programs however the ai will be only compatible with adobe illustrator so we're going to be picking ase in that case if we need to use it later maybe in adobe photoshop or so so i'm going to select that one and it will be saved into our swatches folder and it's going to be saved in that file format swatch exchange files and once you press on save you're going to be seeing that message which means that our swatches contain ingredients patterns or tints 
and they are not gonna be opened in other Adobe programs so this means that your gradients patterns or tints are not gonna be shared however all your process colors will be shared and working fine in other applications we're gonna be pressing ok and if you have another file that you're working on and you want to access that swatch again you're gonna be going to that button in here and you will be finding your saved swatches in that area and one of the most important presets in here is that color box in here you're gonna be seeing Bantum plus CMYK coated and uncoated one in here as well and these two color swatches are so essential for any designer who want to print anything in CMYK so we're gonna be opening CMYK coated for instance and you will be seeing all these colors and by scrolling you're gonna be seeing all these colors in here and you can be searching color codes in here so I'm gonna type B 101-14 and I will be having that color to choose and use it in my CMYK printing file so I can be selecting that one and it will be added to my swatches in here and if you're usually designing print files it's really recommended that you add this one in here and keep it always at your swatches panel at your fingertips so I'm gonna close that one and go to swatches again uh, the last thing I want to show you in here is that we can be showing some kinds so we've got all swatches and we can be choosing only color groups so we're gonna be having our color groups in here only and also show gradients we're gonna be covering gradients later in detail and also pattern swatches and so on and here we've got our color guide panel let's say you've got that one selected and we need to see the guide for that color so let's go to that panel and we will be seeing our color in here we'll be having our tints on the right side and shades on left side and here we can be seeing harmony rules we're gonna be seeing complementary complementary two and high contrast one two three four having all these varieties for our color and also we can be customizing these colors from here color guide options and we will be seeing steps for we can be increasing that or reducing that maybe to three or so having three steps on here and three in here four we'll be having four on that side and four on that side and for variations we can be choosing less from here we're gonna be seeing the difference in here and also this one will be giving almost the same colors so I'm gonna set it back to 100 and let's say we need to use some color harmonies of our yellow we're gonna be selecting that one pressing the command and all these four colors for some nice gradient or color harmony of our color then we're gonna be saving that color group to our swatches panel from here we're gonna be clicking that one and then open our swatches and you will be seeing these colors are added into our swatches panel so that color guide panel could be really helpful if you like for instance that color and you want to get all the varieties of this one so we're gonna be going to color guide and click in here and you will be seeing all these color guides maybe you like that one and that one and that one you can be using all of them so hope you're now more familiar with colors in adobe illustrator that was khalil ibrahim with you thank you so much for your time and i'll be seeing you